The premise of this show, uh, in a nutshell, is uh, basically uh, it takes place in a veterinarian hospital, and uh, we meet a, a variety of sordid characters, including George Coleman, who is the head of this uh, animal clinic. And he's uh, basically the house of the animal world. He, he loves animals, but he hates people. So we're all sort of following his lead and trying to sort of bring a little sensitivity to the, to the clinic, but he is hell-bent on treating people like crap. And that's sort of the... Oh, and then on top of that, his ex-lover, I guess we can call him, she shows back up on the scene and wants to become uh, the new director of the hospital. And he's got a few things to say about that. So we all sort of pay the price for her coming back. The script was really, really on point. It was not pandering for laughs. It was not sort of, you know, dumbing down. It was very, I guess, it was just upfront. It was like a really honest kind of script. And also, I'd never, this hook, the, you know, us being vets, I've never seen that. So I thought that could be like a good, a good in. You know, people like a good meaty hook, and I think we got one. Fake vetting is exhausting. I had to rectally examine a basset hound the other day. He did not like my fingers being anywhere near his bum. Jumped off the table. I, I would too if I was him. But uh, we have a, a, a monkey around here named Crystal. Uh, she is a handful. We'll put it that way. We actually had a Bengal tiger here. We have penguins, cats, dogs, you name it. Every animal that we could see run through this pilot has been there. It was like Noah's Ark. Except for not two of every one of them, but yeah, it was a, it was exhausting to say the least. And the, the the working with animals is like everyone knows that's a bad idea, but we all jumped on board anyway. <laughs> We're all here, and then when an animal acts up, you're like, How, why is this animal being difficult? Because it's an animal. They're not actors. We have to remember that. But yeah, it's fun. I mean, when I read it, I was like, Oh, a, a, a monkey doctor? That's you know, that's a little silly. But then once I saw it. And she, you know, the first scene we had, she, she had to like run over and shut the door and jump up and hang from the handle. And I've never laughed so hard in my life. I was like, that's it, show's getting picked up right there. So she's got, she's got a little power, she's getting a little diva-y around here. But uh, she's, uh, she's, got some, she's got some staying power, that little crystal. So I'm glad to be working with her. I played Dr. Doug Jackson. And he is a super vet, but he has recently had his heart broken. When you first meet my character, his girlfriend has left him for another doctor, Dr. Shankar, from another clinic, a rival clinic. And I am pretty distraught about it. And I go to George in a last ditch, George Coleman, played by Justin Kirk. I go to him in, a, in my last ditch effort, you know, last attempt to just reach out to anybody because nobody will help me. And he's just, he doesn't like being friends. He's not a real friendly guy or doesn't like to admit that he's real friendly. But nonetheless, he kind of takes me under his wing and, and takes me to the dog park to show me that you can learn everything you need to know about a woman by looking at her dog, which is factually true. <laughs> and uh, I go to the dog park, and he, you know, he, he kind of schools me on these women and their dogs, and I make an attempt to approach some women based on that info, and I fail very, very badly. And so then I spin out even harder, and I sort of slip into a depression, and lo and behold, George, my non-friend, ends up hooking me up with Dr. Shankar's ex-girlfriend as a revenge sexual encounter. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll call it that, a revenge sexual encounter. And uh, he kind of, in, in the process, proves to me that he is actually my friend. And uh, I think at this juncture in, in Doug Jackson's life, he needs friends. And uh, I think that's the, that's the relationship we're going to explore, is it, whether or not I can sort of bring him into the realm of being a reliable friend, I guess, you know, and that's, that's sort of, that's where we're at. Yeah, we shot a scene today that it was one of those moments where I just had to stand back and be like, what am I doing? Look at this scene. Like, the photographer showed me a, a, a still of it. There's a monkey, there's four turtles, there's four guinea pigs riding on the back of these turtles. The monkey's holding sweaty, you know, wads of money with a, like a dealer's visor on, and we're all screaming at turtles to win this race that we've set up, it just, it blew my mind. I, like, and when you read that, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, they're racing turtles at the end of the show. And then you actually put it all into play. And it was, uh, I, uh, I won't forget that moment anytime soon. And I don't have to, it's all on film. I've never seen a show about uh, the veterinarian practice. Uh, I think it's pretty, I hate using this word, but I think it's pretty fresh. It's a pretty fresh new thing. And I think it's also, it's, uh, it's, it's not 
a gimmick. It's not. I know we have a we do have a monkey in the show. Yes, we do have a tiger. We have penguins. We have baby Bengal tigers. We have dogs, cats, whatever you know, what have you. But we're. It's not. The show isn't about that. It's about what happens in and around uh, a veterinary office, and there just happen to be animals thrown in there, and a lot of and a lot of chuckles, lots of giggles, hopefully. There is a character on the show named Dr. Rizzo, who is uh, a capuchin monkey and is the resident primate here at uh, the Crane Clinic. And I think we keep him here as, uh, really because Dr. George tells us we have to have a monkey here. But I think we have all grown to really like the little guy and uh, we keep him around for kicks, I think. I think you gotta really have a certain amount of patience and understanding when you're training a, an animal to hit a mark. And uh, that's what they're doing. I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty incredible.